So I'm back today to give you a tutorial on page six in the reference table. But instead of just doing it through pictures, what I want to do is I want to do this with actual hand samples I've collected uh, over the years. So I'm going to kind of choose just some of the more popular and more characteristic base rocks off the reference table, page six. And what I want to do is I want to kind of explain the characteristics based on the vocabulary on your reference table, page six, the igneous rock chart. I'm going to begin with this rock called pegmatite. We're going to start on the bottom of the rock chart and work our way up. First off, you'll notice it's kind of a light-colored rock. Light-colored rocks are called felsic rocks. So this is a rock that's going to be found on the left side of your igneous rock chart. The next thing I want to kind of point out is that the crystals are quite large. This rock has significant crystal growth within this rock. They're all interlocking, so they all kind of connect together almost like a puzzle. The reason why these crystals are so big is that this rock formed very slowly deep underground. Rocks that form deep underground are called intrusive igneous rocks. Intrusive are found inside the earth. Now, crystal sizes more than 10 millimeters, like this rock of pegmatite, has a specific name. There's a specific way we describe the crystals, and that's called texture. The texture of this rock is called very coarse. Very coarse Igneous rocks are the biggest crystal sizes you can discover, and this is going to be the biggest crystal size you have on your reference table. Intrusive form very slow, deep underground. It takes a long time for that magma to cool off, and because it forms so slowly, those crystals have a long time to grow. This rock here is intrusive, and it has a very coarse-grained texture. Another intrusive rock that we have is the light-colored granite. Again, light-colored means it's going to be felsic in nature. Remember, minerals are the building blocks of rocks. So if you have light-colored minerals making up your rock, you're gonna have light-colored rocks themselves. Now, notice that these crystals here are not nearly as large as the pegmatite, but they're still visible to the naked eye. If you can see the crystals without a magnifying glass, they are going to be intrusive in nature. This rock formed, again, deep underground from magma. It cooled a little bit quicker than the pegmatite because the crystals are a little bit smaller, but they are clearly visible without a magnifying glass. The texture for granite is called coarse. Coarse just meaning that the minerals can be seen without a magnifying glass. So again, granite is an intrusive rock. The texture is coarse. Now there's a darker counterpart to granite and that is called gabbro. Gabbro is a dark colored rock. Dark colored igneous rocks are called mafic rocks. Mafic rocks are going to be made of a little bit of a darker mineral, more like pyroxene and olivine. So again, minerals are the building blocks of rocks. So the darker minerals give you the darker rock appearance. These crystals are still quite large. It's a coarse texture. This rock is still intrusive. It formed deep underground from the slow cooling of magma. So your intrusive rocks form inside the planet. The rocks that form close to the surface or at the surface are called extrusive rocks. So the two extrusive rocks I want to begin with are the lighter colored rhyolite and the darker colored basalt. What makes these different from the intrusive rocks is that these rocks, their crystals are so small, you need to look at them, use a magnifying glass to be able to identify the crystals within these rocks. These rock crystals are so small because the lava at the surface cooled incredibly quick. And the fact it cooled quick, it did not give enough time for the lava to form crystals to be able to see them with the naked eye. So rhyolite is on the left, it's light in color. That rock is felsic and its texture is fine. Basalt is dark in color, that's mafic. Their texture is fine as well. So whenever you have rocks that you cannot see the crystals, that is going to be a fine texture. There's another texture that can form within the extrusive category, and that's gonna be a rock that contains gas pockets. If a rock has gas pockets, we say that rock is vesicular. Now this is a rock called scoria. You'll notice it's dark in nature, so it's mafic. These rocks are gonna form directly at the surface from the flowing lava, 
and the lava tends to have gas pockets that get locked into the lava as it cools. So the holes in there are called vesicles. The texture with this rock is called vesicular, and this is only going to be found with an extrusive igneous rock. Now you'll notice that scoria is a little bit different appearance than vesicular basalt. So the vesicular basalt has a little bit of a darker appearance. Again, they're still going to be mafic, just like the scoria. The holes are a little bit different as well. It's just a different type of lava that this rock was formed from. But again, this is extrusive. This rock has gas pockets. Those gas pockets produce vesicles, and this texture is called vesicular. Now, there is a lighter version of a rock that contains vesicles, and that is called pumice. Now, pumice's holes are not nearly as apparent. They're much, much smaller than the scoria and the vesicular basalt. But the one thing about pumice, which is kind of neat, is that pumice will actually float in water. It's actually light enough to be able to float in water into a beaker of water here. So there's so many gas pockets. This rock is so filled with air that it actually physically floats in water. So anything with holes in it will be vesicular. The last texture I want to talk about is a texture called glassy. And this is going to be a rock that's called obsidian. Obsidian has a glassy texture, which means that the lava, it's an extrusive rock, the lava cooled instantly, where there wasn't even any time for this rock to form any crystals at all. So a glassy texture is not going to have any crystals whatsoever. Now this is a felsic rock. It's actually on the left side of your igneous rock chart. Okay, this has the same composition as a rock like pegmatite. These are actually light colored rocks. Obsidian, if you cut obsidian into a real thin slice, it's actually clear as glass. It just appears black to the observer. So it's kind of one of those oddball rocks that may kind of throw you off a little bit, okay? But it is a felsic rock and its composition is glassy. So let me run through the characteristics again one more time. Felsic rock, light in color. This is an intrusive rock. Texture is very coarse. This is a felsic rock. This rock right here has a texture called coarse. Crystals are still big enough to, to be seen without a magnifying glass. Okay, this rock right here is also intrusive. This is a intrusive igneous rock. It also has a texture that is coarse, but with it being darker in color, it's mafic. These rocks here are extrusive igneous rocks. They are both fine texture, the left rock is light in color, so it's felsic. The rock on the right is dark in color, so it's mafic. They're both going to be fine grains, fine texture, because the crystals cannot be seen with the naked eye. You have rocks that are vesicular. Rocks that are vesicular are going to have gas pockets in them. This is vesicular basalt. And again, you see the gas pockets in here, very, very easy to identify that texture. And then the last texture that you have is going to be the glassy texture. Again, extrusive, forms completely at the surface, not enough time for minerals to form. This is obsidian, extrusive rock. All right, with that being said, that is the basic characteristics that you'll find on your reference table, page six. I hope this visual tutorial gives you a little bit of an idea about what you're looking at with page six. And I'm hoping to do this also with some of the other rock charts uh, in your reference table. So please check back soon and we'll see everyone later.